You come for the birds, you stay for the views. Or the opposite. Out of all of the beautiful places to see in the United States, there's possibly none more impressive than the Grand Canyon. This geological marvel is a premier destination for tourists and sightseers alike, drawing around 5 million visitors each year. While many people come for activities such as hiking and rafting, others come simply to observe the natural beauty of the canyon, including the flora and fauna that call this landmark home. Having never seen the Grand Canyon before, we went to the South Rim to try and see what bird species we could find. Our first stop was the Visitor Center. Hey everyone, Ryan and Derek from Badgerland Birding here, and we are at one of the premier destinations for people to visit in the United States, the Grand Canyon. Today we're on the South Rim at the Visitor Center. Unfortunately, the first bird we've seen were house sparrows, so only up from here. Yeah. Heading toward a lookout called Mather Point, we walked the conifer line trails listening intently for any bird calls. One of the first animals we noticed was a mammal known as a rock squirrel. These rock squirrels looked like a combination between a woodchuck and a gray squirrel, and they were extremely friendly and curious, most likely because they associated humans with food, as we saw many of them trying to steal food and even drinks from people. We walked the paths toward the edge of the canyon, excited to get our first looks at this natural wonder. But before leaving the trees, we encountered our first native bird species at the canyon, the black-throated gray warbler. Black-throated gray warblers can normally be found in pine forests with understory brush in western North America. They can be identified by their gray, black, and white coloration, with a speck of yellow in front of their eye. Males have a black throat, and females normally have a paler throat, with a variable amount of black. These birds feed mostly on insects, and can often be seen in the middle of lower sections of trees as they hunt. Their cup-shaped nests are often built in a tree fork, normally between 3 and 35 feet above ground. After checking out the black-throated gray warblers, we arrived at the canyon's edge, and finally got our first look at one of the most impressive landscapes in the entire country. First look at the Grand Canyon. That's an incredible view right there. Yeah. Found a black throat gray warbler. So far, two species. The view is incredible, as expected. Um, it doesn't even look real. It just looks like somebody painted it. You come for the birds, you stay for the views. Or the opposite. After breathing in the beauty of the Grand Canyon for a while, we went back to walk in the South Rim Trail that bordered the Conifer Forest. Every so often we would find a spot to look out over the canyon to see if anything was soaring. We found a few common ravens, along with a western swallow species energetically flying around. We have some violet green swallows soaring over the canyon. And that's a lifer for me that I hadn't seen before today. Um, hard to get pictures of when they're gliding so fast, but it's really neat to see them soaring over the landscape. While we had found a few species, the birding was still slow. Black-throated gray are really the only species we've seen regularly up here so far, and it seems pretty quiet. We're definitely not at the right time of day for birds, but we're hoping that we're still going to catch some unique species here. We went southeast along the edge of the canyon, where there were fewer people. After walking for a while without hearing anything, we came across another black-throated gray warbler, as well as a habitat-specific species, quite at home in the forests of the Grand Canyon. Dude, Grand Canyon birds. Juniper titmouse lifer. They're traveling in a little family group right now. It looks like they have a baby they're feeding. So really cool. Yeah, it feels like we stumbled onto a little pocket of birds with the black-throated grays and the titmice all kind of feeding together. The juniper titmouse is a petite, quirky, crested bird with a dark eye, dark gray wings and head, and a pale gray stomach. They were previously considered the same species as the oak titmouse, and together they were called the plain titmouse. 
However, they were split in 1996 due to their differences in song, habitat preferences, and genetics. Juniper titmice reside in the southwest, where they are normally found in pinyon juniper woodlands from 2,250 to 8,000 feet in elevation. Their diet consists mostly of seeds, plants, insects, and arachnids. Nests are made in cavities, and during nesting, the female is normally reluctant to leave the cavity and will hiss at predators when threatened, as opposed to fleeing. After a flurry of bird activity, the canyon once again went quiet. Nonetheless, we were determined to keep searching. A short while later, we caught a glimpse of something we knew we had never seen before. We just had some kind of jay fly through, it was a blue flash. But we have no idea where it went. We followed the jay to an opening where we found many other species that we hadn't tallied yet at the Grand Canyon including a chipping sparrow, an ash-throated flycatcher, and a blue-gray gnatcatcher. Then, all of a sudden, a jay hopped up onto a tree, allowing us to identify it as a Woodhouse's scrub jay. The Woodhouse's scrub jay is a large jay species with a blue and gray back, head, and face light gray stomach, and white throat that sometimes shows a partial blue necklace. They can be found in southwestern North America and in parts of Central America, often in pinyon pine habitats and shrubby areas. In the spring and summer, Woodhouse's scrub jays feed mostly on fruit and insects, and then transition to eating mostly nuts and seeds in fall and winter. Not above thievery, they have been known to steal food from Clark's Nutcrackers, can also be seen around people looking for handouts. Nests are basket shaped and made out of sticks, roots, plant fibers, and sometimes animal hair. These playful, colorful birds are exciting to watch and were a welcome sight on the South Rim Trail. We spent some time observing the Woodhouse's scrub jays until eventually they took off. That was definitely exhilarating. Uh, so exciting to be in a new habitat with such a great view and be able to find some unique birds. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of slow for a while, but the stuff we found was really cool. Got a couple of lifers in just one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. We enjoyed our first day at the Grand Canyon, admiring both the breathtaking views, as well as the fascinating bird species that live there. While we left the visitor center feeling happy with the birds we had found, little did we know that there would be even more excitement for us in the near future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.